control of every situation that has tried.
to see you, to receive you, to hear you. We open our lives to you, Lord. Come, come, come. Come and speak to us this day. May the Lord speak to you this morning. Those of you who are gathered here physically, may the Lord speak to you this morning as you follow us online, on TV, worshiping with us from wherever you are. May the Lord speak to you. May you feel his presence. May you feel him near you, touching you, reviving you, making you new again. We give you all the glory and all the honor. And as we draw near to you, King of Kings, this morning, we know we are sinners, we are sinful. Friends, I ask that you shall repent of all that you've gone through, of all that you've done, your mind, in your thoughts, in your actions, the words you've said, the things you failed to do, take them to the Lord and ask that you'll have mercy upon you, that you'll have mercy upon us as a, as a church, that you have mercy upon us as a nation, have mercy upon us in this uh, institution, in Macquarie University. We give you the glory, Lord, King of Kings, for your word say that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, but if we confess our sins, you forgive us. May you take this moment as an individual and confess to the Almighty. You know what you've done. You know what you've gone through. You know your areas of weakness. Ask that you have mercy upon you. Confess your sins. He's a faithful God. And he's a just God. And he forgives all our sins. Not just some, but all of us. All of them. And cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us, King of Kings. Cleanse us as our leaders, as clergy in this church. As members of the council. As leaders in the worship team. Cleanse each one of us. But as, as a congregation here physically and those that are listening in, those that are following and worshiping with us cleanse each one of us purify our hearts purify our lives do not allow the Lord to pass you by this morning even as we worship there is nothing that you can hide from him he knows every secret in our heart the things we do, the, sing, the things we think about, he knows. And if we bring them to him, he'll give, forgive us. He'll purify us. We give you all the glory and all the honor, Lord. We worship you, glorify you.
congregation we joined at general confession prayer you are free to sit or kneel or stay standing so long as in your heart you are confessing to the lord almighty god our heavenly father we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought word and deed through negligence through weakness through our own deliberate fault we are truly sorry and repent of our sins for the sake of your son jesus christ who died for us forgive us all that is past and grant that may serve you in the nuance of life the glory of your holy name amen may the almighty god who forgives all retreat paint have mercy upon you pardon and deliver from all your sins confirm so in life goodness and keep you in eternal life through jesus christ our lord we pray for the collect of the day, the first Sunday after Epiphany, together we pray. O oh Lord, we beseech you mercifully to receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may both receive and know what things they ought to do and also may and power faithfully to fulfill the same through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever, and ever. Amen. We shall enter into a moment of praise and worship in songs. Glory to God. Good morning, church. Good morning, everybody. Are you glad that you're in the presence of the Lord? Is He faithful? Has He been good to you? Those hands together as we declare his faithfulness.
Jesus did it again. Can I hear you singing that again with me? Say, when I thought that he had done too much, oh, Jesus did it again. I can tell it enough. Oh, oh, and I shout it loud from the mountain top. I can tell it enough. Oh, and I shout it loud from the mountain top. It is coming from my heart.
is a way maker. He makes ways where there seems to be no way. Our right to receive is based on what he has already done. His death, his burial, his resurrection, and his present day ministry at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. His blood is enough. And he speaks to us today and says, rise up and walk. Take up your mat and walk. That's an instruction in righteousness. Oh, we are walking today. We're rising up today. We're picking up our staff today because our God is able. We thank you, Jesus. You are here moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you.
glory and all the honor. Lord, you are not only the way maker, but you are also the way, the life, the truth. So Lord, even as we sit to listen to your word, make a way in someone's life this morning. Make a way in someone's life this day and change their situation, change their story. May someone leave this place saying, Lord, you have made a way for me. We pray, Lord, that you make a way for many Ugandans who are struggling, we think back children to school, with many Ugandans who are struggling without what to do, with many students who are struggling with their exams, make a way, King of Kings. Many families that are struggling here and there, Lord, make a way. We give you all the glory and all the honor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We're still standing, affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and the state at right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join the words of the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Please be steady for the ministry of the word. Morning, church. Praise God. Today's reading is going to be taken from the book of, of the gospel according to John, chapter 5, verse 1 to 12. John, chapter 5, verse 1 to 12. The healing at the pool on the Sabbath. After the, this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep, get a pool, and a rami called Bethesda, which has five roofed colonnades. And this lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am going to another steps down before me, Jesus said to him, Get up, take your bed, and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath, and it is, it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. But he answered them, the man who healed me, that man said to me, take up your bed and walk. They asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? This is the word of God. Good morning, church. You are all welcome for this, our second service this Sunday. Please extend your you know, wave to your neighbor and telling him or her that you are welcome. Yes. Uh, greetings from the chaplain. He's still on leave, but it's, it's like his leave ends today, so I believe this coming week he will be with us. Yes. Uh, I'm glad to introduce to you 
our preacher this morning, Ms. Tabakuta Nasamweo. Where, please, welcome him. Mr. Bakutana is a certified executive coach and he's a leadership coach. He is a CEO of Inspired Leaders International. This guy is a chairman of Father's Union at St. John's Church, Kamocha. He is also a synod member of the Diocese of Kampala. And not only that, but also a secretary to the House of Lady. Ms. Wakutana is married to only one wife, Honorable Charity Wakutana. And God has blessed them with two children, Prosper and Petra. And the entire family is here, is the one who will introduce it. But Samuel, you are welcome. Before he comes, I invite the skit guys to come and give us a skit and then we pray for you. Yeah. How are you? Praise God. Amen, amen. I love God because I've grown weight. I can see. Those are the fruits of yeah. the uh, By the way, where is he? Who? Uh, hey! Mukuru! Mukuru is a. Hey! Hey! Man of God! Hey. Ah! Uh huh. And we allow the Lord to do what He wants. Are you fighting? Yes, very fine. Very fine. Whew. You scared me when you call it that. Well, the what was the problem? No problem. The Lord is fine. What, what is the problem, Mr. Adam Sumba? Too hard for me. Uh huh. It is too hard. You can't even believe. But you are the pastor's wife. What is hard? What can be hard? Uh-huh. He has been practicing his Hey! Yes, stay there. Stay there, Pastor! Uh-uh. Pastor! Pastor! Down. New down, new down, new down. It has. That's all. You yes. think that's all? Tell us, youth pastor. Tell us, youth pastor. Yes. You said that I'm a youth pastor? Yes. I was then, I was there worshiping in ministry. Huh? He called us. We, we were praying. Uh -huh. He said, when, when, when I touch on you, uh -huh. you're going to receive extra blessing. Wait. I was there. I was there. I only felt a hand. Because now the head of late, I can't allow this money happening in the church. No, 
We have to stone him. That is not allowed. Okay, you come. Come, come. Man, what do you, want you come. No, 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 uh, no, no. no way. You, you wait. Come, come, come. Could you come here? You should have left him to go. You have left him to go. You have left him to go. Wait. Uh -huh. Okay, tell us. Hey, tell us, tell us. Uh -huh. How are you? You are okay. Uh -huh. Amen. Hey. Amen. Mm. You? you? You. See? Him. Head of ranking? First of all, what do you know about him? What do you know about him? You know him. You know him. Hey. Hey. Drinking. Drinking water. Or Drinking water. Juice. Spell us. Makuiriza. Makuiriza. First word. Uh huh. You saw him. Uh huh. Many. 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 With the women. With the women. Hey. Wait. First word. First word. He's telling us. Uh huh. Tell us, huh? He was. He held. Huh? Oh. You really tell us now. Go ahead, put it. Funzaring you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, don't funza me. <laughs> because I also know your life. A <laughs> bibion be money. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Are you sure? Really? All the time? Many times we say those things without thinking about them until somebody interrupts us to think about them. So is God really good all the time? And you mean it? And you even dare to believe it? If that's true, then give him praise right now. It's a pleasure being back home at St. Francis Chapel. It's always my my pleasure to be here. This has become more or less my second home. And every time I come, I am so glad to be here. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for our leaders here at St. Francis. Good to see you, Reverend Irene, once again. <laughs> I came to know Reverend Irene a number of years ago, more than a decade ago, when she had uh, just been priested. <clears throat> And on my wedding, she was uh, one of the three pastors that wedded me and my dear wife. So it's good to see you here today. And we've served the, uh, we've served the Lord and preached the gospel together in a number of ways. So I'm happy to be here to see you and the rest of our clergy. It's good to be able to meet again. We, we often meet in a few other places <laughs> by God's grace. So it's good to meet them here again. And all of you. I was looking through in the congregation and I could spot a few faces that I know, so I felt home. I felt home. And especially because I came with my whole family, my whole heart is here. Please stand up. That's Miss Universe, the queen of my heart, Charity My Watermelon, Honorable. <laughs> that is uh, my son, uh, Prosper. That is uh, our daughter, Petra. 
You're not seeing. Why? Are you blind? <laughs> are you blind? <laughs> are you lame? Are you paralyzed? <laughs> Good to see you two again. <laughs> uh, uh, next time we will take the cameras there maybe so that you see from the screen. And all of you who are online, it's good to see you in port because we believe you're there. And the fact that you had to tune in to listen to the word, this service this morning, we know the Lord has a word specifically for you. So you're welcome online. <clears throat> Raise your hand if you have ever slept on a mat. Yeah, my hand is also up, so. Oh, man, we are many. This church is Mati. <laughs> Mati from the mat. Eh? <laughs> and I don't mean those who chilled on a mat one afternoon under, you know, on the balcony. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the whole night sleeping on a mat, maybe circumstantially, not voluntarily. So let's see again. Those, if you say I've ever slept on a mat, raise your hand with me. Oh, the hands are still up. So you really got it. You knew what I was talking about. The mat. I, I slept on it when I was young, but also when I was old, I went for a mission somewhere in a place called Buseta. Buseta is in a district I won't tell you. Those who come from there have known the place. Buseta, go down, continue to Akomoru, where there are rocks and a small lake. So I went to that place with some other uh, missioners, and we were going for a mission outreach for a whole week. So we were going for door-to-door -door mission and so on and so forth. And while we were there, there were no beds, there were no uh, mattresses. We were only blessed with mats. And these were papyrus mats. And you know papyrus mats, you would rather sleep on another type, not the papyrus mat. Because the papyrus reed is really strong and big, and when you sleep on that mat, you really feel it. You, you feel the mat. And this morning, I'm here to tell you about some other gentleman who slept on a mat for many years. And this time it's not me, this time it's not you, this time it's a gentleman in John chapter, uh, chapter 5 of the Bible. So... You can open the Constitution of Believers, section John, chapter 5. Hallelujah. Now speaking like a kingdom lawyer. Opening the Constitution of the Believers in Jesus Christ, section John, <laughs> chapter 5. When you read from verse 2, they are talking about a pool. Are there swimmers in the house? My fellow swimmers, where are you? Swimmers, people who swim, fellow swimmers. We are always very few, everywhere. We are always a few. <laughs> and even among those few, most of them are always in the shadow end. I'm always in the deep end alone with my wife and a few other people. <laughs> Good to see you, my fellow swimmers. We are always a few. I encourage you to try to learn swimming. It's very healthy for your body. It exercises the, all the parts of the body. The doctors in here know that it is better than most other exercises. So the pool, the gentleman was at the pool. I am sure it wasn't like a swimming pool. It was a different kind of a pool, bigger, five porches, according to the Bible. And there were many people there. That pool in Aramaic is called Be Bethesda, but in Greek it is Bethesda. And I got to know that Bethesda means the house of kindness. Tell your neighbor, welcome to the house of kindness. Hallelujah. Verse 3 says, A large crowd of people who were sick were lying on the porches of the pool of Bethesda, the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. The blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. The blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. Say that with me. The blind, the lame, and they paralyzed. Say it again. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the blessing of being in your house. 
We thank you for the blessing of your word. We thank you for the blessing of life and all other blessings. When we often think you have done so much, oh, you again do it. You do it again. You give us more blessings. When we think you are done with our lives, you start afresh. When we think it is the end of the road, we realize it's just a corner. The road begins afresh. You're so gracious towards us. You're so faithful towards us. Even when us, we are so unfaithful, so ungracious, so unkind in many ways to one another, to our lives, to our future, to our destiny. You stay faithful. You stay kind. You stay gracious, our Lord and our God. Even when you are a God of polarities, you stay faithful, O Lord, our God. On that, you never change. So we thank you for this morning and pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that you speak to us that our blindness, our lameness, and our paralysis will be washed away by the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Give you thanks and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Blind, lame, and paralyzed. Do you know that many people are blind, are lame, and are paralyzed? I see many people are nodding their head. So they are in agreement. Do you also agree that those people could actually be seated here today? The heads that are nodding have reduced. Because now it's a point of reflection a little bit. You see, <laughs> when we say somebody is blind, we simply mean he can't see. Not so. When we say somebody is lame, we mean they can't walk. When we say somebody is paralyzed, they can't do. So if you can't see some things, you are blind, even if you can look at me. If you can't walk towards some places and some things and some directions and some corners of life, you are lame, even when your hands and feet are okay. If you can't do some things that you should be doing, then you actually paralyze it, even when you have no disease of paralysis. Talk about people who are blind. Sit right here. They can't see the opportunities that God has given them. They can't see the truth of the word of God. They can't see the solutions that are all around them. They are only always complaining. Blind. Talk about the lame. They can't walk. They can't walk forward. To take important steps in life. Can't walk forward to knock on the door of the interviewer and say, I am the person you are looking for. They can't walk forward to that girl they have loved all these years and propose to her. And time is going. They need to read this booklet of mine, Fresh Apples for Single People, The 33 Secrets to a Relationship that Leads to Marriage. And stop being lame. I'm being tempted to now speak a little bit more about that, but let me overcome this temptation and stay here. <laughs> Lame. Paralyzed. They can't do. Can't do anything. They are stuck in life. They are frozen. They are living like, like a statue. They are living a life of limitation. They belong to the Kant Association of Uganda. The Kant Association of Uganda. I can't do this. I also can't do that. I also can't manage that. I also can't. 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 The Kant Association of Uganda. Members, oh yeah. Blind, lame, and paralyzed. And you see, when I talk about these three words that we have read in verse 3 of John chapter 5, most of us are experiencing them in different aspects of our lives. Every day, every week, every month, for many years now. For example, some of us are blind, lame, and paralyzed mentally, intellectually, in our mindset, the way we think. The way we think. That gentleman called Paul, Apostle Paul, a tent maker, a businessman, a a gospel communicator, preacher, equally an author, wrote many different amazing things to different uh, audiences in different places. He wrote to the Corosians, he wrote to people in Philippi, he wrote to people in Rome, 
he wrote to people in, in Thessalonica, writing letters, talking to them about a few things. But in almost all of them, all the letters he wrote, he addressed the issue of how people were thinking. When he wrote to the Romans, the people in Rome, the church in Rome, chapter 12, verse 2, he says you should be transformed. And if you are going to be transformed and not you know, make yourself pattern yourself according to how the world does things. You need to be renewed in your mind. He said, do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you by the renewal of your mind. Not removal. Okay? By the renewal of your mind. When he wrote to the church in Colossae, the Colossians, chapter 3, Verse, I think, 1 and 2. He said, as you are focusing your mind, make sure you focus it on things above, not things. So, so he was saying, have an elevated way of thinking. Elevate your thinking to things that matter. Think a certain way. When he wrote to the people in Philippi, the Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8, he said, if there is anything that is trustworthy, if anything is worthy, to be praised. If something is noble, if something is true, if something is lovely, if anything is of good report, if something is of virtue, if something is excellent, think on those things. So he was telling us, this is how you are supposed to think. Now, when he told the Romans that be transformed by the renewal of your mind, I want you to remember that he was actually talking to people like you and I in church. In church. He wasn't talking to non-believers out there. He was writing all these letters to believers. In other words, he was saying, you may have already put things right spiritually. You are born again, fire spitting, tongue speaking, demon chasing, anointing sweating, and all those things you can mention. But when the way you think, you are fundamentally castrated. Turn to your neighbor and ask, are they talking about you? Blind, lame, and paralyzed in the way we, in the way we think, in the way we think. Some of us here we think like beggars, and then we we expect to live like kings and queens. We think like hens. <laughs> Just eh, small things down in the banana plantation. But yet we expect to fly in life like eagles. How? How? We just think like losers. We expect to win trophies and medals in life. We think like local chiefs. <laughs> and we expect to, to act like global citizens. Intellectually blind, lame, and paralyzed. Some of us are economically blind, lame, and paralyzed. Financially. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see you. Intensive care unit. Huh? Needing a blood transfusion. You are on a financial ventilator. You need some, some, some sanitizer, some economic sanitizer. Because the financial virus has wreaked havoc on your past, present, and potential future. Financial. We, I remember a gentleman in one of our churches here in, in Kampala. Whenever you would meet him, oh my. Some of you, you quote verses. Say, um... Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 says, ask and you shall be given, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. While well, you all like typewriting in the air because the, the verse, you know it, off calf. This gentleman would not quote verses, he would quote chapters. We used to call him Bible man. He was a walking Bible. He would come to you, to my friend here. God bless you and I will tell you why. Every time I have met you, you are always dressed decently. God bless you. <clears throat> so, he would come to a person like and say, I hear the Lord telling me that your word is Psalm 20. Then he starts. May the Lord answer you in your days of trouble, reciting Psalm 20. May he hear your prayers from Zion. <laughs> May the... <laughs> Finishes it. Off head. And why do you are feeling like, oh, hallelujah, the Lord has spoken to me. Then so he does like he says, and brother, <laughs> I don't have transport in case you. Ah! <laughs> now you start to feel like he's both anointed and annoying. <laughs> Financially in the intensive care unit. And many of us here are in that kind of a situation. You are already asking, this month you are already asking, hey, 
How many months are in January? How many months are in January? Not days. How many months are in January as you're scratching your cheek wondering? Blessed are those who overspend in December for they shall see the fire of January. <laughs> oh my! At the end, instead of having more money at the end of the month, you always have more month at the end of the money. And you're always asking us, but where did my money go? But you used it yourself. Do we know? Financially, blind, lame, and paralyzed. You are always the one who pays you, the school fees of your children. Lastly, you are, it's always a narrow escape. Your life is always a narrow escape. The children are already in the examination room. Now, you, your son is standing outside the examination room as they start the exam. And you, you, that's when you are running, panting. You've just found the school fees. Uh, allow him to enter. Your life is always a narrow escape. When you go to the restaurant, you get the menu card. You are always quick to first look on the right side of the menu. Do you know what is always on the right side of the menu card? You also know what is on the left. When you realize you never first just look at the left and make your choice and ask later, so how much is that? If you have to always first look on the right, then that's when you know you are financially blind, lame, and paralyzed. Hey! No, no, today, let's just be real, okay? Tuwaye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. <laughs> so when we are saying that there are many people around that pool of Bethesda who were blind, lame, and paralyzed, don't say, oh, Bambi, those ones. No, we, you, Sam. <laughs> paralyzed. No savings. No investment, no plan, even no plan to have a plan. <laughs> Find that your only financial strategy is hope. Is hope a strategy? And then there are those who are blind, lame, and paralyzed now spiritually. So number one, we talked about the mind, the thinking. Number two, the financial, economic area. Now number three, the spiritual world, the spiritual area. Fundamentally down. We only read the Bible only on Sunday during the service. You only pray when you are extremely sick and in pain. Yeah. You join a fellowship only once a year as if it is an annual general assembly. If you are in a father's union like me, if you are in a mother's union like my wife, you only maybe come to, 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 to church on St. Peter's Day celebration or on Mary's Day. <laughs> if you are a lecturer, you find that for you. Spiritually, you are really down, down, and so as a result, for you, you are always uh, arguing arrogantly about your spiritual ignorance. Tell your neighbor, ah, this preacher, ah, these words. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we need to be honest with ourselves. We need to be honest with ourselves. You find that you fear to share your faith outside the walls of this chapel. If they call you, you are in a banking hall and say, sister, praise the Lord. Because you don't want people around you to hear you say these religious things. Is Jesus, tell your neighbor, Jesus is not a private part. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is not a private part. Jesus is a public good. We should be proud of him. We should speak about him. We should tell everybody about him. We should share our faith with everyone. Jesus is a public good. Everybody in public needs him. Everyone needs to have him. He's a public good. Yes, when he comes, he changes situations. He changes lives. He changes families. He changes nations. It's not a private part. Stop being ashamed of him. Again, Paul wrote to the Romans in chapter 1, verse 16, and he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation of all men. Women. Hallelujah. Hey, so spiritually. <laughs> blind, lame, and paralyzed. And then for some other people, it's actually physical. They are always eating junk, are physically weak and out of shape. Hey. 
When you tear them run after that hen, we get it slaughter it and we eat it. They fall down and almost die. Running after a hen. Because physically they are really <laughs> blind, lame, and paralyzed, always sick, unproductive, operating below average. Now, verse 5 of John chapter 5 says, A man was there who had been sick for 38 years. You say, A man. That is what blindness, lameness, and paralysis do to you. They take away your name. Yeah, they are Jesus called the man. We don't know his name. There are people in the Bible, we know their names. We know Tabitha, we know Peter, we know Paul, we know Dorcas, we know Esther, we know Daniel. This one is called a man. Lost identity. Lost opportunity. Lost royalty. Push. For 38 years. I don't know how many years, you, for how long you've been in the situation you are in. I don't know for how long. Some of you have been in those kinds of nasty situations for so long that now you are the specimen of that situation. You are the sample space when they are looking for people in that problem. You are the flag bearer of poverty. <laughs> Here is the good news, my brothers and sisters. Verse 6. The Bible says Jesus saw him and knew that he had been sick for a long time. Good news. In that situation, you may be feeling stressed because of what I've just said. But let me remind you, Jesus is seeing specifically, particularly, clearly you. And he knows. That's good news. That is good news. That in the crowd, Jesus sees individuals. Isn't that amazing? That it could be a crowd, but even in the crowd, Jesus is seeing individuals. And it is my prayer today, in the name of Jesus, that you will experience the God of personalized service. That today you will experience the God of customized approach. That today you will experience the God of individualized blessings. That today you will experience the God of tailored visitations, in Jesus' name. So Jesus comes to him and he asks him, verse 6 and verse 7, do you want to be well? Do you want to get healed? Then the sick man answered and said, sir, future it kills the destiny and i want to remind you that excuses are bricks used to build the house of failure turn to your neighbor and say they are talking to you <laughs> excuses jesus asked and said do you want to be well what uh, 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 you are brilliant and intelligent people talk to me what are the options to that question yes or simple but the man complicates his life. Most of us are still where we are. Not because Jesus is not there. Not because. The, it's because we are complicating our own lives for no reason. I'm right now putting the final touches to my next book. To my 16th book. Titled Stress Free and Happy. And I'm talking about how people stress themselves. And what they can do to live a life that is stress free and happy. Jesus arrived. He said, do you want to be well? So when he went into... <laughs> All these excuses. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus had to say, just, man, you, you are going to be here for 38 more years. Let me save your life. Pick your mat. Go. <laughs> just, just, just pick your mat. <laughs> <laughs> just speak your mind. I was, I was chatting about this with my dear wife about a week ago, about the, the story of uh, Jericho, the war of Jericho, when the Israelites were moving around it. We realized in Joshua chapter 6 that God told them that for them as they are moving around the, the war, they should not say anything. They should be silent. Don't say anything. It's only the seven priests with the seven trumpets or rams who would be blowing those trumpets over the seven days when they are moving around the world. For them, all the Israelites, millions of them, keep 
quiet. And my wife brought a wise, a wise uh, revelation there that I think God knew if they had to open their mouth and talk, they would kill the plan with the negativity. Say, but, but Manang, what are we doing? Just moving around the world. Eh? <laughs> but, 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 God said, don't talk. Even on the last day, when <laughs> they had moved around for the seventh time, Joshua, on the instruction of God, did not say, now praise the Lord. He said, shout, because again, if they say some words, they may also kill the miracle. So he said, just shout, say, whoa! Ah, what is down? You need to learn a few things, brothers and sisters. Now, as we almost come to the close of this, <laughs> Because of these lame excuses, he said, do you want to be healed? And he went into excuses. Because of these lame excuses, most of us have moved from good, I mean from bad, to worse, to... Wait to say worst. Because if you go to First Kings, chapter 17, verse 17, the story of the widow and her son and prophet Elijah. Verse 17 says that some time later, the widow's son got sick. He then got worse and worse. And then we would expect that he say, and then worse. Yeah? The Bible says, and finally, he died. <laughs> so before you think that it is bad, worse, worse, just know it could be bad, worse, and dead. Because of the lame excuses. Because of not listening to the gospel of, the, of, 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 of good news. The good news of Jesus Christ. In fact, verse 21 and 22 of uh, 1 Kings 17. Now it says, Then Elijah stretched himself out on the boy three times and prayed and said, Oh Lord, my God, restore this child to life. And the Lord answered Elijah's prayer. The child started breathing again and was revived. Let me call upon you right now. This is a divine instruction. Open your mouth now. Lift your voice. Pray to God to revive your life right now. Just say, Lord, revive and restore my life. Revive and restore life to me. Revive and restore my finances. Go on for one minute. Just go right ahead for a minute. Say, revive and restore my finances. Revive, Lord, and restore my academics. Lord, revive and restore my faith. Revive and restore my future. Revive and restore my mind, Lord. Revive and restore my health. Restore my destiny. Revive and restore my peace. Revive and restore my thinking. Revive and restore my faith. Revive my relationships. Restore my children. Revive my business. Revive my emotions. Restore my blessings. Revive and restore my spirit, O oh Lord. Revive my excellency. Revive my character. Restore my leadership. Restore my joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me tell you it is finished. It is finished. Because you see, Jesus said when you pray, believe and it will be done to you. What is remaining is for you to manifest that in the physical. And if you are to do that, you should do three things. Let me leave you with those three things in a very brief manner. Number one, participate in your deliverance. You see, in that story of that man by the poolside, verse 8, we are in John chapter 5. Verse 8, Jesus said, uh -uh, get up, pick your mat, and walk. He was told to pick something, right? Are we together, friends? He was told to pick something. It was an active kind of activity. It was not a passive event. When he participated, he activated his healing. Friends, life in Jesus Christ is an invitation to participate, not to spectate. The woman with the flow of blood had to touch the hem of the garment for her to be healed. Bartholomew, the blind man, had to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me for, her, for his eyes to be 
to be opened. Moses had to strike the waters of the Red Sea for a path to be created. God is the one doing it, but he wants you to participate and do something in your own deliverance. It's not a matter of just being there and say, I am hopeful, I am believing, I just will wait upon the Lord. What are you doing while you are waiting upon the Lord? Participate in your own deliverance. What is your role in your own financial growth? What is your role in your own mindset reprogramming? What is your role in your own spiritual renewal? What is your role and your responsibility concerning your physical wellness? Participate, do something, take a step, pick your mat. Second last, number two, prioritize what to carry forward. <laughs> you see, when Jesus came to this gentleman, he said, pick your mat. He was specific, he was particular, he was clear. The mat. Do you think this gentleman who had been on this pool, you know, by this, the side of this pool for 38 years, just had a mat only? Do you really think he was just there with a the mat only? Probably he had many other things around him that he was using. But Jesus said he only picks, prioritize, just, just pick the mat. He didn't tell him, uh, okay, now uh, pick your mat, your tattered shirt, your strong stick, that big stone, and your cough syrup. <laughs> he just said, pick them out. Let me tell you, if you are going to be revived and restored, some things are not worth picking anymore. Some relationships must stay in 2021. Some projects should not take your money anymore. Some family members, some extended family members should not receive any more financial support from you. Some things need to stop. You have to prioritize what you are carrying forward. Some of these resolutions that have been on your list every January for the last five years, maybe this year, remove them. I, I, I am planning, my resolution is to do that thing that I didn't do last year, which I had failed the previous year when I set it in the other year, when my mother inspired me to do it. The previous year, remove it. It's not a priority. Prioritize what you must carry forward. Some programs should not take your time anymore. Some habits should stop today. Some excuses should remain in the last year. Some clothes should be given away. And some toothbrushes should be replaced. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus said, pick the what? The mat, not everything. So you need to know your mat. You need to know, prioritize. What is my mat? Then carry just that one forward. The rest of the things, leave them behind. And lastly, proceed to the next level. So you see, you have participated in your own deliverance. And when it happens, you prioritized what to carry forward. The rest of the things, you leave them behind. And now, you don't stay there. You move. You move. You proceed to the next level. Jesus said, pick your mat and walk. 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 Many of us are like the Israelites around Mount Sinai. You know, in the, I think that's Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 1. Yes, verse 6 to 8. God came to them and said, you have been on this mountain for a long time. It's time for you to break camp and advance. Break camp and advance. Break camp and advance. Jesus told his disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, and he said, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, the one I'm sending you, you will receive power. And when you receive power, you will be my witnesses here in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in Judea, and the ends of the earth. When you receive that power, you won't stay here. You will move. You will proceed to the next level. You will go further, even to the ends of the earth. When they received the spirit and power in chapter 2, they stayed in Jerusalem enjoying the new thing. <laughs> These guys, they stayed. Yet they were told the power they were to receive was to enable them to proceed to the next level, was to enable them to go to the next district, to the next country, to the, until the ends of the earth. That is chapter 1, verse 8. So when they didn't listen, God turned their tables. Chapter 1, verse 8, he made it chapter 8, verse 1. Chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Then persecution came and forced all of them to now go. You don't need to wait for God to turn the tables. You must proceed to the next level. You've picked the mat. You've been delivered. You are healed. Yes, you are now carrying only what you must carry. Can you now move forward? 
can you can you can you move forward can you proceed to the next level hallelujah today desire to move forward today desire not to be on the march past by the end of 2022 let your life be positively different according to what god wants to do with you so in conclusion friends you may be you may have been blind lame and paralyzed you may be sick or worse or almost dead but god can restore you to life and revive you he can make you breathe again and be strong and well but you must manifest your own restoration number one by participating so pick the mat number two by prioritizing pick only the mat and number three by proceeding when you pick the mat move go that chapter 5 verse 9 Bible says immediately the man got well. He picked up his mouth. He started walking. Verse 14, afterward, Jesus found him later in the temple and said to him, gentlemen, listen, you are now well. So stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So we have a clue about what could have caused him to be on the pool for 38 years. We now have a clue in verse 14. Stop sinning or something worse will happen to you. Don't stay at the pool for any other one day. The Savior is here and he is asking you, do you want to be healed? Let's pray. Lord, we want to be healed. We say yes. We say yes. We say yes, Lord, we want to be healed. We've been by the pool for many years. We've been in some situations for quite a long time. Lord, we want to be healed. We say yes. We surrender to you. We say yes. Take over, Lord Almighty, and transform us. We are, we are ready to participate by cooperating with you, participating in our own deliverance, Lord. Not that we will do anything that will make a difference. It is you that will, but we want to cooperate with the process. We want to participate. Open our eyes to see what we must carry forward and what we must leave behind. And Lord, show us the, the direction so that as we proceed to the next level, we are moving towards the direction where the Spirit wants us to be. Today we want to be healed. We choose to accept you. We choose to listen to you. We choose to believe you, O oh Lord, our God and our King. I'm giving you that opportunity right now as we pray. If you say, yes, I want to be healed. I, I have never given my life to Jesus Christ. I want to do it now. I want to participate in my own deliverance. Just put your hand up in the air. I want to pray with you wherever you are. Just put the hand in the air. And if you have also been born again for some time, but then some things happened, you know things are not well. You want to also renew your covenant with Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, also put your hand up and we pray together. Thank you for those hands. Lord, I thank you for these men and women who have boldly put up their hands as a way of participating in their own deliverance, as a way of participating in their own healing, as a way of participating, Lord Almighty, in their own awareness. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you forgive them. I pray that you release them out of the bondage of blindness, lameness, and paralysis, and make them well, Lord, that they will no longer be by the side of the pool but they will pick their mat and walk to where you want them to be and walk to a future you planned for them and walk to the destiny that you have in the plan of things for their life and the kingdom. We give you praise and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give him praise. the lord praise jesus let us appreciate the lord for the message we have received also appreciate samuel for speaking to us so well thank you very much all of us who've put up our hands let us throw and replace some of the things the toothbrush some empty tins of needle that we've kept for years uh, those things we know amen 
let us allow the Lord to speak to us this year and uh, be revived and we breathe again. Amen. I uh, will now uh, joyfully give a gift to the Lord. Amen. Uh, the books are available. Uh, one is titled, You Will Manage, The Seven Keys to Life uh, of Victory and uh, Unstoppable Success and Doing the Impossibilities. And then one is Fresh Apples for Singles and uh, Single People, 33 Secrets. Please uh, visit the tent outside and uh, get a, yourself a copy. Amen.
glory and honor be unto you, our Father and our God. We thank you for your word which has come clearly to us this morning. We thank you so much, Lord, for our brother Samuel, whom you've used in a mighty way. Lord, we pray for your blessing upon his life. We pray for your blessing upon his family, upon his ministry. May you continue to use him. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you've given to us as your children. Father, we bring ourselves before you this morning and we offer ourselves to you, King of glory. May you accept all of us. May you receive us, O oh Lord. And may you receive this gift, King of glory, that your children have brought before you. Even those who have given online, Father, we bless your name for them and we ask for your blessing upon all of them. May this be used for the extension of your kingdom in this place and beyond. Bless all of us together as a family through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. May the Lord bless you. May he shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May he scatter every darkness before your path and give you peace. May the blessing of God, the Father Almighty, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of you, upon your family, upon your children, upon everything that you touch now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Yes, the worship team is going to lead us in a recession of him. Thank you all for coming. Is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks to you, Lord, for all the things that you have done. Grateful for your love, I give you the praise. It is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks to you, Lord, for all the things that you have done. Grateful for your love, I give you the praise. Counting my blessings, just to give you to myself. When I thought oh. that he had done too much, oh, oh. Jesus did it again. I can't tell it in love. Oh. Shout in love. love from the mountain. I can't tell it. In Coming from my heart, praise and thanks to you, Lord. All the things, all the things that you have prayed for your love, for your love. give you the praise. The praise is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks to you, Lord. For all the things.